Hello everybody, my name is James McHugh. I'm an employment barrister at Trinity Chambers. With me is Morgan Bryan, who is also an employment barrister at Trinity Chambers. Hello. Um, this is a recorded webinar that is going to be uh, hopefully one of a series of relatively regular webinars um, that deal with questions and answers that have been sent in. Um, this week we're going to largely be dealing with follow-up questions from the live webinar which took place a couple of days ago um, that Trinity Chambers put on. Um, if you want to see that webinar it's going to be available, it should be by the time this goes out, available on the Trinity website and via our social media channels. Um, if you don't want to know the results of that webinar, look away now. Um, but if you're not bothered about spoilers, um, you, we can dive into the question and answers. Um, before we do that, there, uh, most of these questions and answers relate to furlough. Um, there has been some updated guidance relating to the operation of the furlough scheme um, that Morgan's just going to set out now. Yes, thank you, James. Um, there's been already a plethora of guidance and directions in relation to furlough. Uh, as of yesterday, we had an update from the office of HMRC, the chief executive, providing guidance in relation to the need for written consent from an employee to furlough. And specifically, what that update said was the employer and the employee must reach an agreement and an auditable written record of this agreement must be retained. It does not necessarily follow from that. The employee will have provided written confirmation that such an agreement was reached in all cases. James, in a nutshell, what is the position now? Um, so this is a welcome clarification that's been provided by the Office of the Chief Exec um, that's trying to deal with the conflict between the Treasury direction on the one hand um, and the HMRC guidance on the other hand. The Treasury direction had said um, and was supposed to take precedence over the guidance but had said that in order to access the uh, furlough scheme employers would need to obtain um, written consent from their employees that they were to be furloughed the guidance and there had been i think five iterations of the guidance prior to uh, the direction being published none of which had said you needed written consent from your employees um helpfully what this seems to suggest is that employers who have furloughed pre the direction being issued but hadn't obtained written consent aren't going to be prevented from making a claim under the furlough scheme um for what it's worth i think my position would still be if you are an employer who is considering furlough, hasn't yet done it, make sure you obtain written consent from your employee before you do it. But for those who have already done it and are umming and ahhing over whether they need to go back retrospectively and obtain that written consent, the guidance seems to suggest that HMRC are going to pay you out um, even if um, you've not got that express written consent. Um, with that cleared up, let's dive in to the questions and answers. Um, the first one that came in and was uh, an overspill from a few days ago was um, whether or not staff can be uh, furloughed either during their notice period or if they're already on furlough, can they be given their notice? Uh, Morgan, what do you think about that? Good question. One which the guidance, uh, none of the guidance, does not actually give a specific answer to. However, the HMRC guidance for employees seems to suggest at least that workers can still be made redundant whilst furloughed. And this would suggest to us that you can give employees their notice whilst furloughed. And in answer to the question, we would err on the side of answering it. Yes, staff can be placed on furlough during their notice period. Uh, James, when it comes to employers who are still considering which staff to place on furlough, a common uh, query we are asked is what about uh, employees who have childcare commitments that they otherwise would not have due to the issues with the schools? Can you place staff who are unable to work due to those commitments on furlough? Um, the, the short answer is yes. 
um, the guidance has been pretty explicit on this point that they'd set out as a specific example of workers who can be furloughed, those who are no longer able to work due to childcare commitments. So if you do have an employee who otherwise would be able to work but can't do so because of childcare commitments, um, HMRC have been pretty clear that they would be eligible for furlough. Um, this one's a slightly longer one, um, uh, uh, but worth asking nonetheless. Um, one of the questions we had in was, can an employer still make staff redundant following a fair process, given that the option of furlough is available to them? Obviously, each case turns on its merits, and particularly when it comes to issues regarding redundancy. Yeah. It is worth bearing in mind the following points, though. Firstly, the scheme itself is voluntary. It is not mandatory to make any employees go on furlough, and HMRC have been clear that there is no intention to compel either employers or employees to participate in it. And secondly, when considering fairness, a tribunal will inevitably look at whether the employer has given due consideration to alternatives to dismissal. And it would seem just unusual in the circumstances if considering dismissal, an employer has not given any thought whatsoever to placing their employees on, on furlough, particularly when it will not cost them anything. But uh, as we've said, each case turns on their, its merits. And it is also worth remembering the whole point of the scheme. James, can you remind everyone what the actual, why the scheme was introduced? It, yes, um, I, I, I think that's, that's very useful to bring that up. That although obviously, like we, we can't stress enough, um, sort of clambering onto the fence that it, each, each case is going to turn on its own merits. Um, but the CJRS, the Coronavirus Job Retention Scheme, has been set up with the specific purpose of preventing job losses and redundancies. Um, and so I, I suspect that if an employer um, got to tribunal facing an unfair dismissal claim in relation to a redundancy, um, and they'd not even turned their minds to whether or not they could have taken advantage of the CJRS. I, I suspect that they find themselves some, in some difficulty. Um, obviously, there may be cases where the scheme's not appropriate or not available to people, but where the scheme was available, um, I, I think employers may well have a difficult time explaining to a tribunal if they hadn't even considered it in the first place. Thank you, James. What about the nature of work that staff can undertake whilst on furlough, if anything at all? One question we have been asked is, if staff are required or are asked to carry out disclosure and or prepare witness statements for a tribunal, does that constitute work for the purposes of the scheme? Um, again, the nutshell answer would be probably yes. Um, Employers, whilst their employees are furloughed, are not allowed to ask them to do any work. Now, the definition of work is broadly either anything that would make money for the employer or anything that could be classed as providing services to the employer. Um, in the circumstances that you've described, so either carrying out a disclosure exercise or working on a witness statement, my view is that it's very likely that those things would fall within the second category, i.e. providing services to the employer. Uh, and so they, they would constitute work for the purposes of the furlough scheme. Um, yeah, so yes, I, I, I think that that's, that's the case. Yes, I think that's helpful. And it's also worth remembering the context of this in that it would be extraordinarily unusual for an employer to have an upcoming employment final hearing, given that they have all been adjourned until at least the end of June. And we would expect, in light of that, that most, if not all, employment judges would be sympathetic to providing extensions, and there would be a query over whether the orders that they are required to meet are, in any event, still valid. And much of the guidance has requested that employers and employees cooperate and that would extend to parties involved in the case a little bit more cooperation is required in the current case and if parties are shown to do that i would imagine that they would get every sympathy from the judge but 
coming back to the original question, I think the position would be that, in a nutshell, staff being asked to provide this, a witness statement or disclosure would still be carrying out work for, under the scheme. Um, in terms in of relation to moving on then to a different question that we received, which was in relation to payment by the employer. Um, what's the current position in relation to the payment under the furlough scheme? Is, is it the case that the employer is able to wait until money is received from HMRC before it's paid out to employees? Or does the employer have to pay first and then wait for it to be reimbursed? Well, I'm afraid to say that that fence we've been sitting on is getting rather warmer because, again, it depends on the individual circumstances. And um, what we can say is that the scheme itself is an arrangement between the employer and HMRC. It is not an arrangement between the employer and the employee, nor does it interfere with the employment contract. On that basis, then, unless there's a specific agreement between the employer and the employee, that wages can in fact be delayed until the employer has been reimbursed or paid by HMRC, then as it stands, the employer is still under the contract liable to pay the wages as normal and should do so. The ultimate idea behind the scheme is that employers pay out and then they are reimbursed and the guidance is pretty clear on that. Moving on from when payment should be made, one important question is what in fact should be included in the payment? A common question is whether overtime should be included or not in the calculation of normal salary for the purposes of the scheme. Um, well, the guidance isn't particularly clear on this point, And I think that's been one of the criticisms of the, both the guidance and the direction is that um, it, it's not, it's not been particularly helpful on what should be included within the definition of normal salary or wages. Um, for my part, the, the approach that I've been sort of endorsing is to take a similar approach um, as to you would when you were calculating holiday pay. Um, namely, if overtime is non-voluntary, so the employee can't turn it down when it's offered, um, then I would have thought that, that would fall within the definition of normal salary for the purposes of the scheme. Um, if it's not, so if it's voluntary overtime and there's either no obligation on the employer to offer it or the employee to accept it, then I would have thought that you can't include it. What about commission? Specifically, commission has been accrued, earned, but not yet been paid. Is that included in the salary under the scheme? Um, so, uh, again, it would com with commission, it would probably fall into two categories. Um, in the circumstances that you've described there, my reading of the guidance is that if it's commission that has been earned, but due to a quirk of the contract, it falls due to be paid during um, fur the furlough period, then that would be included as part of normal salary, yes. Um, I, I think the guidance generally seems to think that anything that the employer has an obligation to pay, a pre-existing obligation to pay, then they will need to include it. If it's the case that it is bonus, uh, it's either bonus or commission that has yet to be earned, and is going to be contingent on either making sales, meeting performance targets or anything like that, the guidance seems to be um, that that ought to be excluded and that wouldn't form part of the definition of normal salary. Thank you, James. Helpful. Thanks. Well, I think that's enough of us banging on about furlough for now. Um, thank you for watching. Um, if you are still watching and you've made it this far, well done. Um, the idea, as I said at the start, is that we, we'd like to do this on a more regular basis. So if you have any either queries arising out of this or um, questions that you'd like us to answer on another occasion, there will be contact details at the end of the video for you to do so. Um, in the meantime, as I say again, thank you for watching and I uh, hope you all stay safe out there and we'll hopefully see you next time. Goodbye. Goodbye.